Well, Jake Stevens, welcome back to Mount Crested Butte. It's been just about a year since uh, we were here last in this room and uh, talking about some products. So uh, welcome back. It's good to have you back here. Yeah, thanks. Psyched to be here. Brought some fresh snow too, which was phenomenal. Today. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. a day. It was a real fun day out yeah. there. Um, first of all, just to get started here, why don't we tell people what your title is and you know what you do a little bit, and then we're going to talk about some new products we've got here. Yeah, I'm the uh, Alpine category manager for Rosignol, um, which is a kind of combination of a lot of things, but uh, kind of uh, product manager, um, servicing sales team, that type of stuff, working with the sales reps. Um, the bulk of my duties are to pay attention to what's happening with product, um, doing some product development um, in Europe uh, or globally, I guess is the better way to look at it. Um, you know, our teams are based in France um, and we have our North American headquarters in Park City. Um, and so I do boot development uh, as well as ski development uh, for the brands. And, uh, you know, today we're talking about ski boots. Yeah. And you personally have been pretty excited about this. And I think that has something to do with the fact that you have a pretty strong race background. And um, so I know that you've been excited to talk about some new offerings here from Rosignol on the boot side of things. And so let's jump into it. What do we got here? Yeah, we're looking at the uh, high speed and the pure boots uh, from Rosignol. Um, it's a project that we've been working on for the last three, four years. Uh, we were supposed to come, come with it last year, uh, but we were unable to because of the world pandemic that we're working with. Um, so gave us another year to focus on the liner, focus on a couple of little things here and there that we wanted to, and we were bringing it to market uh, now. Um, and it's uh, three new less, 98, 100, and 102. Uh, high speed replaces the all speed line, which is what we had for the last six, seven years. Uh, Pure, the name remains the same, but it's a full new development. So a uh, brand new boot. Okay. Why keep the name if it's a brand new boot? Uh, you know, it's a pretty catchy name. It's done incredibly well in the market. Uh, we didn't necessarily need to change the product because it was uh, pretty unique uh, and it, it's, it did well. Uh, it fits a lot of different variations of feet, uh, a lot of different flex patterns. Um, so it, it filled a spot in the market um, it, that needed to be filled and, and it did an incredible job. So we didn't want to confuse the customer there. Uh, with high speed, we changed the name from all speed. It's kind of the evolution of all speed. It's been a lot of years that we've been working as a boot brand to grow. Uh, we're one of the largest boot brands in the world, and we haven't been playing in that high performance market on the kind of unisex men's side of things. Um, on the women's side of things, we've been really driving the market there. Uh, so we thought it was smart to change the name of high speed or all speed to high speed uh, and leave pure as pure. So here's a tough question. How or why do you decide to go into that high performance market? You've already said you're selling a lot of boots, you know, you're doing well in that space. Maybe the different way to put it is what do you see as the opportunity there, you know, to sort of do better or differentiate yourself in that high performance category? Uh, we sell a lot of all track boots. Uh, and so in selling a lot of all track boots, um, we really focused our, our energy on that market, which is walk mode, uh, accessible. Um, some have dim set, uh, dim toes and heels so you can uh, tour in them um, or tech fittings rather. Uh, and it, it's an easy fitting boot. You don't really, it's not a boot fitters boot. Uh, when it came to all speed, it was more of a fit option. Uh, it wasn't the first boot any boot fitter would go to the wall and grab if someone asked for an Alpine style, uh, more aggressive skiing boot. Uh, it really was that last option. If your foot doesn't fit in all these other brands, then we have another boot that we can put you in. Mm. Uh, and while that's great, um, it doesn't 
equal a lot of sales. Uh, and it's not, again, like I said, it's not the first thought that comes to your mind. And the goal here was to get um, that high performance, high level skier into a boot, uh, but also bring it down in the range. So we offer all the different flexes uh, in a 98 last, uh, 100 last and a 102 last, um, bringing performance 130 flex in every uh, last, essentially. Okay. So we have, I want to clarify this just to make sure we're tracking. Yeah. So we're talking about the pure and the high speed. And, and I want you to just dip, like, let's sum that up again, just to make sure people are tracking with you and I am. Yeah. So, uh, pure and high speed are our Alpine boots. Um, all track is our walk mode accessible boot. Um, and so what we're looking at here is a replacement to our Alpine style, uh, pins in the back of the boot, uh, traditional Alpine ski boot. Okay. Let's get into it. Um, which do you want to start with? Well, let's start with the high speed, um, which is the black boot that you see here. Um, we made a lot of adjustments. Really nothing is the same as what it was uh, with all speed. Uh, we focused on, like I said, performance. Uh, and part of that was pulling from our racing heritage and really paying attention to uh, where does performance come from, uh, how the foot aligns inside the boot, uh, where the power comes from. Uh, the biggest piece, the biggest change in this boot is where the hinge rivets lie. Uh, so we moved the hinge rivet up 1.2 centimeter, which is the same height as our racing boot, our hero race boot. The difference with a hero race boot and a retail boot is that a race athlete is really bringing that boot way behind them, creating a ton of leverage and trying to drive through the front of the boot. Retail customer really spends the majority of their time over the center of the boot. They'll make the move and they'll drive the boot, which I ski in this boot and really enjoy that power that I can gain from it. But uh, they're not going to be putting the boot way behind them and using gravity to create, create the power. So bringing it up, you know, the, the power is there, but we had to make it more accessible for the, the average skier or, or even the, you know, high level skier that doesn't want to have to work as hard. So we brought that hinge rivet forward one centimeter. This allows you to, ex to uh, access the power uh, much easier. It settles you into the front of the boot and allows you to drive from the, from the cuff in a higher position. Uh, and, you know, if I had my PowerPoint with me, I could show you all the angles and all the measurements that we took. But really, it's where your ankle bone lines up and where the tibia goes inside the boot and how that shin bone is creating power. Huh. So is one way to think about that, you know, we sometimes talk about how easy or difficult it is to initiate the flex pattern of a boot is please correct me if I don't have this right, but by moving that pivot up and forward is one of the results or the primary result that a person would be able, most people will be able to initiate the flex of that boot more easily? Yeah, absolutely. That's a hundred percent. If you had just moved it forward, uh, it would be easier to get. Even easier. Even easier. Okay. But by bringing it up, we make the kind of the PowerPoint higher which is stronger. Uh, and so the thought process really is bring it up to make it more powerful uh, and then bring it forward to make it more accessible. Uh, and really with all speed, because it was so down low and back, you drove the boot from the heel pocket. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not a very comfortable position to drive a boot from. Uh, you're basically driving from your heels, which forces everything back. Uh, in this boot, you're driving everything from the cuff, which gives you a much more centered over the boot, over the ski, allows you to control the tip of the ski. Uh, and then the flex pattern, you know, it obviously, as it gets softer, it's even easier to access that power. Talk a bit again about the lasts of that high speed. Yeah, we, so we built a true 98, a true 100 and a true 102. Um, so those boots are three different lasts, three different molds, um, and really focused on, uh, the fit, allowing the foot to sit flat, allowing the heel pocket to be held. Uh, we really believe, um, you know, strongly at Rosinal that the heel pocket is a great place to hold somebody. Uh, the instep is a great place to hold somebody. We really want this area to hold you, uh, in this area to hold you, uh, 
we don't want to crush your forefoot. Crushing the forefoot changes the dynamic of how the foot functions. And this is something that I learned with racing, working with World Cup athletes and trying to create more power, more leg rotation. Uh, there's a lot going on inside a ski boot that you may not realize uh, when you're out there skiing, but we focus on how the forefoot uh, reacts with the ankle, which reacts with the shaft of the leg, uh, which leads all the way up to the hips and how the hips basically function uh, over the ski. So by allowing the forefoot to sit flat, we're not uh, crushing the bones, essentially. That's the way to look at it, is really pinching everything off. Uh, by doing that, you stop the ankle from flexing, which stops the leg rotation, which stops the hip movement. So you really lock the whole system out uh, and create essentially a bad position for someone to ski in. So uh, by building the boot uh, and the liner, when we look at how the liner uh, kind of fits, we really looked at having the foot sit flat, creating enough room for the ankles. So you're not getting pinched or crushed in the ankles, uh, but holding you in a uh, position that allows for comfort, but also uh, performance. So you talk about, a, you use the word true 98, true 100, <laughs> true 102. I was like, that's interesting. Yeah. We should probably unpack what true means <laughs> because you also just talked about this boot has a roomier toe box. I think that's what you yeah, said. I, I don't mean to say put... roomier. I want to say um, the the way the walls are shaped and the way that the the foot is supposed to sit inside a boot. Um, we're not cutting off those angles or or crushing the the zone at where the foot sits. And and a lot of it comes to the liner. Um, and I can show that in a second here. But when I say true, um, it's really focused on uh, how many molds you build and and really what are you trying to to accomplish with the boot. Um, so when, I, when I'm really speaking about true, we focused on building a 98, then we focused on building a 100, and we focused on building a 102. Um, we didn't try to combine all three builds into one thought process or um, you know, one um, you know, mold sharing or any of that type of thing. We really wanted to make a performance boot that's in a, a 98, make a performance boot using the same characteristics, the same ideas, but making sure that there's uh, the same level of functionality in a 100 and a 102. Some of the ways that we do that, um, you know, is playing with the grid design on the side where we can change the amount of plastic that's in that area, uh, change the grid patterns to allow for a certain amount of twist, amount of bloatation in the boot, which are things you want. You don't want a boot that is just linear. You want to have twist in the shell. You want to have bloatation in the shell. What word are you saying? Lotation? Blotation. Blotation. Yeah, okay. Sorry, blotation. So the boot, the boot's gonna go like this when you flex. Uh, and that's the that's the boot bloating. Um, and so you want that to have to happen. Uh, you want that to happen in a in a World Cup race boot as well. Um, if it's just rigid and and very, you know, down the line, uh, it's gonna cause the ski to engage and not want to unengage. It's just going to lock in and you're going to be full power. So you need to have some of that forgiveness in the boot um, as the you know chassis twists and moves and the whole system moves and shifts. First time I think in the history of blister we've ever talked about blotation. So congrats. That's you know congrats. Yeah and I think I mean one can certainly have too much blotation or deformation of the boot and that sure. can be terrifying yes. but what you're saying is these things this is another element that needs to be and should be fine-tuned in a boot uh, a little bit of deformation or blotation is actually a good thing in the way if we want to switch metaphors like carbon fiber mountain bike wheels they can definitely be too stiff right and so this is always about fine-tuning these products and the rest but I can't believe we've gone 11 years at Blister and this is the first time blotation has come up. Um, yeah, and it's an interesting thing. If you ski, um, I've skied prototypes that um, that do, you know, de deform or, or bloat too much or in the wrong places. Yeah. And it is terrifying. Yeah. You lose feeling on the inside of the boot or the outside of the boot. Uh, we I skied one boot that you would roll it up on edge and it felt like your foot was falling completely out of the boot. And you would, I would actually would be making a turn and look down to think that there's a big hole in the side of the boot. I mean, that's just playing with the materials and, and adjusting 
where the where the materials lie, how thick the walls are, what's causing the twist or the stretch or the you know you know the bloatation. How do we change those different things? And uh, for sure, it, it, if a boot's not set up properly by the manufacturer, built properly, it's terrifying. <laughs> so I want to help people watching this think about okay should I be thinking about or trying to go put my foot in that boot? Just give the names of some other products out there that if it's kind of like, if some of these things are potentially on your radar, this would be a boot that you would suggest you might want to take a look at. Yeah. You want to, you know, if you're a head core skier, um, if you're a, um, a, a Nordica speed machine, um, uh, you know, any of the Technica true um, Alpine style boots um, that are pinned in the back. Um, we're not talking about walk mode boots, um, very different beasts, completely different setups, different ski uh, feeling. So um, really the goal with this, um, and it's kind of to, you know, fire a shot across to everybody's bow is this boot was built as an Alpine boot to compete with every boot on the wall. So, um, my suggestion, and I've done this, and, and I've done it with a lot of you know uh, retailers as well as a lot of consumers, is try it side by side or try one boot on and then try this new boot on uh, and feel the differences because it's astonishing um, the feeling that you'll have putting some of these other boots that, that you believe was the right boot. And, and um, this is the first, one of the first times um, with all track, I feel confident with where that boot sits and what it is. This is the first time with a, with a, with the Alpine style boot that I am confidently sitting here saying, try it on. It's, it's one of the best boots on the market. Uh, it's going to fit well. Um, you know, we talk, we talk about the custom comfort, which again comes to the, the liner um, and in that high performance, uh, high speed product. And Again, just to make things clear, this boot is available in what kind of range of flex? Uh, this boot is available um, in an 80 flex all the way up to a 130 flex. Um, and it's kind of, um, you know, there's a bunch of different versions within there. You have 98, 100, and 102 last. So you, you kind of hit the, all the, the spots there. Um, and then you can get into, um, you know, 110, 98 flex, uh, right? Or 110 flex, 98 last. You can get into a, a 130, 102. So if you have a wide foot, we want you to still have that 130 flex. Uh, just because you have a wide foot doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a, a strong flexing, strong skiing boot. Uh, so um, really it's all of the flex patterns that, that are basically built for that, um, for that unisex men's style product or, okay. or foot. Should we talk about the liner or should we go to the pure? Well, let's jump into the pure because the liner is shared on both sides. Um, and then we can, you know, we can get into that. So um, on the pure side of things, um, a lot of the technology is shared. So the lower cuff is actually shared between high speed and pure. Um, so no difference in lower cuff other than we make this boot down into a true 22.5, uh, which is a really important thing uh, because, you know, there's a lot of boots out there that are 22.5s with a 23.5 lower shell. Um, so this is true 22.5. Um, the biggest difference between high speed and pure is the upper cuff. Uh, so when you look at the upper cuff on this boot, it's tulip shaped, that's the first thing. Um, and that's really important because uh, female calves tend to sit lower um, inside the boot. Uh, so the design here and, and what our, our product team focused on was creating a place for the, the calf to sit inside the boot and not to get crushed and that's where you know this same idea of a cuff was what was on the pure uh the first version of pure and that's why we've done so well with it because it fits the leg well um and it doesn't cut off circulation um, so that's the first piece uh it's a shorter cuff so it sits a little bit lower uh inside the boot uh, and we've really focused on uh, the flex pattern of the upper versus the lower to allow for a much cleaner, uh, smoother flex. Everything between both uh, 
high speed and pure, our dual core injection. Um, not to go back on something, but the high speed boot actually has uh, uh, in the 13098 and the 13100, uh, we use carbon pellet injection into certain areas. The rest of the boots are dual core injected, so they have a stiffer plastic in the sides and a stiffer plastic in the spine, and then softer plastic for a much smoother flex and more smooth rebound uh, in the rest of the boot. Uh, another cool feature with this thing is this new power strap that we built, uh, which comes off on one side and uh, is locked like this, but it's it has Velcro on, on both sides. So you can adjust the position where you want this, uh, this to land. So if you'd rather have more pressure coming from the inside or the outside, maybe you're getting pinched somewhere and you want to adjust how the tongue, rather than moving the tongue and keeping the shin in the position uh, uh, on the tongue, you can actually adjust the position of, of where that is. And that only comes on the pure boots, uh, not on the high speed boots. Okay. So again, pure 98, 100, 102 lasts. And the flex rating ranges are... This is the 120 flex boot here uh, in a 98. Uh, we go down all the way to a 70 flex. Um, again, one, uh, 98, 100, 102. Uh, the 120 is the only boot that has this uh, liner in it. The rest of the boots have a merino uh, liner in it um, that, uh, that's a kind of a fluffy material that goes through the entire liner, uh, which is pretty unique for, for uh, uh, the women's liner uh, and the women's style boot. Okay. Let's talk about this liner. Yeah, so the liner, uh, pretty cool technology here. Um, you know, we've focused on a couple pieces here. First piece uh, is a seamless toe box. Uh, so there's no stitching across the top of the boot or top of the toe box area. Um, it's molded to all of the shells. So each uh, last has a different mold uh, for the shape of the toe box. So it's actually built into the shape of the of the toe box of the shell. Uh, most liners are stitched across the top here, which means it's a two piece uh, material stitching. So you get one piece of material across the front, one material across the top makes it relatively square and flat. Uh, this toe box actually curves with the shell and curves with the foot. So it gives you a bit better feel in the toe box area. Uh, and being seamless, it doesn't allow as much energy or uh, heat to be released out of the toe box. Uh, the other pieces of it are these cutouts that you see around uh, the liner. And those zones are uh, heat moldable zones. Everything on the liner is heat moldable. This material actually goes everywhere. Uh, we built this membrane over the top because when we started heating liners, we started seeing that if you wanted your ankle or let's say your navicular to move, uh, you would actually get movement in other areas, kind of the meatier areas of the foot that you may not need movement. Uh, so navicular starts to move out, but so does the zones below the navicular. So by putting this material over it, it, it actually holds the foot uh, a little cleaner and it doesn't def deform as much uh, as you're heating up. And, and molding the liner. What's cool about it is you can actually pick this away, peel it away or cut it away. And if your navicular or your ankle falls in a different area, you can mold those zones as well. With this, we built the heat stack system that uh, the liner goes on and blows hot air into. We also built a Formula One style tire warmer is the best way to look at it, that wraps around the outside of the liner plugs into the heat machine and heats the external of the liner while hot air is being blown to the inside. That gives a uniform heating around the external and the internal and allows you to mold to the shape of the boot if you have work done uh, to the shell internally in the shell. The external will mold to that while the internal is molding to your foot. What's important about that is a lot of boot fitters will heat the liner in an oven. And what we've been really talking about as kind of our analogy for this is take a frozen burrito. And we've all been in this situation where you take a frozen burrito, you put it in a microwave and you heat that burrito up and maybe one minute in the microwave uh, makes the outside soft, but the inside still frozen. And if you put it in for two minutes, the outside is now, uh, you know, 
molten lava and and the insides molten lava you burn the burn the crap out of your mouth and so you're getting that same to get the inside to the temperature that you want it to uh to mold it right so the way that most liners are heat molded is they're stuck in an oven they're heated but to permeate the inside you have to heat the outside so much that you've overcooked the outside to get the inside to mold properly so by putting this heat glove over the liner and putting it on the heat stack, you're heating the external to the right temperature and the internal to the right temperature to get a full moldability across the liner. Mm. Yeah. Just like a burrito. Just like a burrito. Wow, you really brought it home there for me with that, <laughs> with that one. Um, flotation and burritos. Yeah, talking about it all here. Yeah, we really are. Um, well, interesting. Um, when does this high speed come out? Uh, the high speed boot, uh, we pre-launched it. Um, so there are some stores around the country that have it, uh, but the boot comes out in, uh, 22, 23. So next fall is when it, the true, you know, unveiling of the boot will come out. Cool. Anything else we should know on these two boots? Are we good? There's a lot of technology, a lot of cool things. Um, you know, there's forward lean adjustment. It's a pretty upright boot. Uh, much more upright than most boots. It's at 10.6 degrees, so it's pretty upright. Um, but because we've moved that hinge rivet forward and we allow you to settle into the front of the boot, really gives you that kind of balanced position. Um, you're able to adjust it uh, up to two and a half degrees more by, by, by adjusting the spine of the boot and pushing everything forward. Um, so that's a pretty unique uh, feature that we've built into the back of the boot. Uh, we have a built-in uh, spoiler that it can be adjusted by unscrewing the screw and just pulling the spoiler up and down so you can change how the leg fits inside the boot pretty cleanly. Uh, seam, kind of seamless buckles. We've trimmed the weight and trimmed the size on the buckles. Um, and again, just overall um, a different stance from, from what Rosignol has brought in the past. Well, it'll be interesting to see what people think. Yeah, and uh, good luck with the launch. And uh, yeah, interesting to see a company that's been selling a lot of boots move into kind of a another category and uh, go compete. So, uh, you know, good luck. Thanks. Yeah, we're excited. We're excited. Awesome, man.